If you're new to using Raza or just conversational AI more generally, you may have heard people talking about intents and not been entirely sure what they meant or if you should be using them. Today we're going to talk about what intents are, why we use them, and some of the pitfalls and drawbacks you might run into while handling them. In NLP for developers. So an intent is a representation of a thing a user wants to do in a conversational term. And what we do is we have one intent that will map to many different utterances or things a user might say. Let's look at some examples. So here we have a number of things that someone might say while interacting with your assistant that I would group together. So hi, hello, howdy, sup, how are you? All of these things represent what the user is trying to do is greet your assistant or maybe start a conversation. So I would put all of these under the intent greet. Intents don't have to be this narrow, however. In fact, a broader intent can be a really useful way to trigger your assistant to begin to do other things. So let's look at these conversational turns. I like puppies. We'll leave it for, oh, I'm allergic to shellfish, and no, she hasn't made a reservation yet. Each of these utterances includes very different pieces of information, but the thing that the user is trying to do is the same. I would say that all of these are an example of intent in form. So it's a very broad intent that allows us to capture a lot of different utterances and then decide what we do from there. So we might, for example, want to identify entities. Why do we use intents? So intents are really a simplification of conversation as a whole. And what it means is that you can take many different utterances and map them to a single intent and then decide what you do based on that intent. So by taking many things and mapping them to one of a class of things, this is what we call a multi-class classification problem. Multi-class classification has a lot of benefits. So one thing is that it's been a source of research and development of new methods in machine learning for a very long time. So there's a lot of existing methods. They're also fairly simple to evaluate as problems. So instead of saying, trying to figure out how much somebody enjoyed having a conversation, what you can do is train your model to classify things into intents and then have separate data that you've never shown to your model before and see how well it does on that data that you know the answers to. And that's a relatively simple way to evaluate your models and see how well they're doing. Also, multi-class classification algorithms, many of them will give you confidence scores, which we've discussed in another video about why those are helpful. How do we use them? So they are used to represent what a user is trying to accomplish in a conversational turn. This means that your assistant isn't going to have intents. Um, you know the things that your assistant will say if you're building it with Raza, um, you've determined those ahead of time, you don't have to have to classify those. Uh, and these are ways to simplify handling what users are saying. Uh, it's also a very specific concept. You really pretty much only see it in conversational based NLP tasks. That means other types of conversation work like conversational analysis don't really use intents um, and other NLP tasks that aren't conversation based also don't use intents. It's very discipline specific. What are the benefits? The big one is that it makes modeling conversations much more tractable. So instead of trying to look at a string and generate a new string based on it, you look at that string and assign it to one of a fixed number of categories, which is a much simpler problem. Using an intent based model also reduces uncertainty in overall model behavior. So instead of say using a neural text generator to uh, take in a string of text and then generate something in response to it, you have the intermediate function of taking that string of text, assigning it to an intent and then having predefined behavior of what you want to do when that intent is detected. What are the drawbacks? A big one is that at least for the prototyping stage, you pretty much have to guess all the intents that your users might have themselves. Um, then once you've done your prototyping and you've started to get it in front of users and you're doing your conversational driven development and looping back in the user experience and what they've said, uh, you might want to add additional intents. And at that point you have a data driven approach that's a little bit less um, guessy, but at least the first pass does take a little bit of domain knowledge. Another big drawback of the very simple way that I've outlined intents here is you can really only do one thing per conversational turn. And in real conversations, people might do multiple things per turn. For example, greeting and informing. So handling that requires a little bit more finesse. What are some common errors? A big one is adding too many intents. Each intent should be a broad thing that a user is trying to do, uh, like for example, inform, and you don't want to include pieces of information in your intents. So for example, if you are giving somebody a quiz using your assistant, you might have a single intent that's answering questions in the quiz and not separate intents for every possible answer that they might give. There's just better ways to handle that. 
Another common error is not updating your intents based on user conversations. Especially in your prototype, you're probably not going to be able to cover all of the things that a user is going to want to do. Uh, and you, even if you don't necessarily have a way to handle all of the things they want to do, you do want to be able to fail gracefully. Uh, and then another one that's kind of common is uh, there are multiple classifiers that you can use for your intent classification in Raza, and each of them are going to have a specific dependency pipeline. So make sure you're using the right pipeline for the specific classifier you're using. And that's all outlined in the documentation for each of the classifiers. Some more resources for you. So now that you have a conceptual idea of what intents are, how exactly do they fit into the rest of your Raza assistant? Um, for that, I would recommend checking out episode two of the Raza masterclass by Yusta, uh, where she talks about the whole Raza pipeline and where intents fit into that. Also, to sort of think about how we can move beyond intents and what other things we might want to change about them, um, the blog post, It's About Time We Got Rid of Intents by Ellen Nickel, who's the Raza CTO, goes into a lot more depth on some of the drawbacks that our current system of handling intents one at a time have, and some ways that we can expand on that for richer uh, dialogue systems. Thanks so much for joining me today on NLP for Developers. I hope you found this helpful and it gave you a better understanding of what intents are, how they work, and how they fit into the way that we represent conversations for conversational AI. I'll see you next time. Bye.